Good morning and thanks for joining. I'm, I'm so excited this morning about this chapter that we're going to do in John, uh, John 11. And it's quite an uh, amazing chapter. It, it's most probably one of the chapters that, that has really moved me the most. And moved me in, in a way that, that I really had to apply my mind with why Jesus did what he did. Um, you know, it, it is the chapter uh, that I would encourage everybody to, to read because this is about three people that really love Jesus. This is about a friend of Jesus um, that has that is passed away um, and his sisters really just longing and sending for Jesus to, to come and heal him. Now, remember, this is, the, this is the same Jesus they've seen as well, doing so many miracles in healing people. So, so they, have, they, have, they had absolute faith uh, into Jesus and, and the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. And they are Martha, Mary and Lazarus. I want to encourage you to read this chapter because after this chapter, things really heated up between the Jesus and the Pharisees. The Pharisees were absolutely convinced after this chapter um, that they needed to get rid of Jesus. In fact, not just Jesus, but Lazarus as well as the evidence of who Jesus is. I mean... In this chapter, Jesus indicates, shows one more time, one final time, that he has power over death. Um, he can raise uh, the dead. The real question for each one of us is, can he raise me after death? And this is also the chapter that I think is so relevant for you that is left behind in these days after maybe losing a loved one, a brother, uh, a husband, a wife, and, and is, is mourning um, the loss. And our condolences and empathy are worth everyone, even now in the midst of this uncertainty of the third wave of COVID uh, and the stats increasing. So maybe an opportune, opportune time for you and me to consider whether we really believe that he can raise the dead. And maybe not just about him raising the dead, but who Jesus really is. You know, uh, in this chapter, they called for Jesus and called him and saying that Lazarus is dying. He needs to come immediately. And Jesus tarried days after he only arrived. And, and a big thing about this chapter is that when we as Christians die, when we as followers of Jesus die, when we die in this, to this earth, our souls does not die. Our, our flesh is left behind. But our souls are taken into eternity. And I think a big element of this topic in John, um, in John 11 is the fact that Werner McGee is also highlighting this point quite significantly when you work through the Bible plan. And that is that a lot of people think that eternal life is the thing that you get uh, when you are born again and a follower of Jesus. The reality is that everyone when they pass away are get, having eternal life. Their souls move on. The, the question is whether in this eternal life, this gift from Christ this eternal life is life eternal, eternally with Him. It's life eternally being set free. It's life eternally in worship. It's life eternally in the, in the essence of love. Now, it's quite important 
because you need to revert, rev, um, go and read 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8 that says the saved or lost all of us uh, enter eternity many hope that death may, means extinction but it doesn't and to that extent Jesus does this final act uh, as a build up this massive act where he calls he arrives three days later so Lazarus is about dead about four days and Ma Martha and Mary comes to Jesus and they are saying Lord but but if you were here Lazarus would not have died and I think to a large extent what happens here is when when Mary and Martha comes to Jesus and says if you had only been here in verse 21 he would not have died so many of us today our faith stops at that point we believe in Jesus we believe in Jesus during this time in this realm but the question and what Jesus is coming to show Mary and Martha and everybody else is that his power gone, goes beyond death. His power moves into eternity. That he is the, the power and the source of life for eternity. And that life is in him and that we have that life. So Mary and Martha's faith with Jesus stopped at death. And therefore the statement, if you were only here, Lazarus would have uh, lived. And Jesus mourns with them. But, but where we t sometimes think, and the people that were there thought Jesus mourned because of his love for Lazarus, which is partly true. But Jesus mourned with Martha and Mary because of their hearts and because of their sorrow. And when you have lost somebody, Know this, that Jesus mourns with you. He understands this. But beyond the grave, He also is the resurrection life. His life has brought life beyond the grave. And for us as followers of Jesus, this is most probably the most profound thing that this chapter brings to us, this hope. In fact, Jesus early in His ministry shares a parable, parable about Lazarus and the rich man and when they go to heaven. And during December, a dear family friend of ours uh, passed away um, and um, I was privileged to just lead the, the, the um, funeral and, and it was a celebration service because we knew this, he was... He was baptized. We knew he was a follower of Jesus. And although his last many years of his life was extremely hard, he was a very special man. And we loved him. And we still do. But the revelation of that was that in this parable, parable Jesus shares with us the story of Lazarus when he passed away and the rich man that was opposite the in in, um, in 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 hell and he was calling out to father Abram to send Lazarus to go and tell his brothers this rich man could sense taste feel see he could identify and the great news beyond the grave is the fact that there's life beyond the grave and that you would identify with and Jesus knew this but Mary and Martha didn't and, to a lot, and, and what happens, which we all know, is Jesus told them to roll away the stone. And in rolling away the stone, he prayed and he called Lazarus forth. And Lazarus got out of the grave. And maybe for you, life stops at the grave. And I want to encourage you in this time of uncertainty, that this chapter, this declaration of who Jesus is, May this, may this challenge your faith even to the extent where your faith in Jesus, in knowing who He is, stopped when you lost a loved one, stopped at the grave. 
And I want to encourage you this morning, go and read this chapter. Go and be inspired by who Jesus is and how much He loves you. And for you that has stayed behind, Jesus mourns with you and He is there for you while you are still in this realm. But know this, that everybody is going to go into eternity. Your soul will move on. And the real thing is that if you are a follower of Jesus and your fellow family members are following Jesus, you will have eternity. And that life goes beyond this, this life. That life is beyond death because of what Jesus has done for us. Because of the resurrection life that He has promised us. So I want to encourage you in this week. Do not allow that fear and uncertainty rule your life. But proclaim the reality of the truth of Jesus Christ and His love for you. And hold on to that and cling to Him as He is our comforter. He is the one that is, has this absolute gift of eternity with Him. Life in its fullness with Him. And He encourages us through the power of the Holy Spirit to live a supernatural life even while we are here and fulfilling His testimony and fulfilling our role as witnesses unto Him. So I pray with you, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you experience His peace even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Thank you so much for listening.